Uh, now, when I, when I teach Illustrator, one of the things I like to teach, a little device I like to teach, are these basic camera illustrations. I think kids just like drawing cameras for some reason. Uh, the, I think the aesthetic, something appeals about them. And also, you can be very rough. So when you, take, when you take the image into Illustrator, you don't need to be the most precise. You don't need to be exact. So it's really more of a, if you mess this up, that's a happy accident, then, it's, then you have to be exact with all we do. So the, the basic point of this uh, tutorial I'll do with Illustrator, find a picture of a camera, an old camera. And you'd be surprised how many kids think an old camera is a digital camera uh, with, a, with a screen at the back. So I okay, go, no, you've actually got to get a film camera because they're slightly more appealing. Uh, so then I talk about our programs. So a lot of students are familiar with Photoshop, but a lot of students aren't familiar, familiar with Illustrator. They're made by the same company, and the layout of the interface is the same on both. So Photoshop's got the tools down these side. These are the tools to add something to a page. The tools over here are the tools you use to edit a document. It's the same with Illustrator. So the tools to edit the page are on this side. The tools to change the document are on this side. So I'd import my image. I'd set that on a layer. So second thing I'd like students to learn about is, are the layers. A lot of people, a lot of students understand layers pretty easily. I sort of explain they're like an overhead projector. You layer up transparent sheets of paper. So for the purpose of this, of this uh, tutorial, we're going to make a very, very crude illustration of this camera, but you can do it pretty quickly. So all we need kids to learn about are the basic tools in Photoshop here. So the, the default thing we have to learn about are fills and strokes. So when you draw an object in Illustrator, the default setting for that object is a fill color and a stroke color. The stroke isn't particularly visible, so I'll just turn it up. So the fill color is obviously the color inside the shape. The stroke color is the, is the stroke that goes around the object. You can change both of those by double clicking. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. You've got a fill and a stroke. Secondly, this is a vector program. So instead of working with pixels, you work with anchor points, which are specific points around the image. They can be edited by highlighting sp specific anchor points and moving them, which is pretty basic. But the anchor points also have little arms, which can alter the angle between those curves. So using those dots and using the, using the anchor points, you can create pretty precise, smooth illustrations. But that's not what this particular tutorial is about. It's about doing something really rough and really quick. So for, the, for all the purposes of this illustration, to make a vintage style looking drawing, I think it's pretty, pretty easily. You grab the, you find the pen tool, and I probably won't get to do the whole thing, but I'll do part of it. So the pen tool works by drawing points between two lines, which should be obvious. So that's obviously not ideal when it comes to something that's approaching a hand-drawn illustration. The lines are quite, um, the lines are quite jagged. Doesn't look artificial. Doesn't look made by a person. It looks very computer-based. But there's a few ways you can you can improve that. So once, and students love this because it really is just tracing an image and then and then applying a few tricks to get something that looks hand-drawn. So once you've traced your image quite crudely and quite quickly, which I've done here, you get an illustration that's just a jagged bunch of lines, which isn't ideal. However, there's a very fast, quick, 
there's a fast, quick trick you can do to make this look more artificial, uh, more hand-drawn. Select all the lines in the illustration by pressing Control A. Underneath objects, you can go path, simplify. So the simplify line converts your crude drawings into what looks like a person would draw on a page with actual strokes instead of points. So that's one way we can make it look a little more hand-drawn. And the second way, which kids tend to like, uh, is sort of a hidden function. Underneath Windows, we've got Brushes Library. Uh, in Brushes Library, there's a ton of artistic type different brushes. For the point of this, I might go Ink. So your brush strokes now take on the characteristics of these previously drawn strokes. So if you click on one, so you get, you get a sort of effect of actual paint on a page. Whoops. There is a little bit of finagling to do afterwards, but um, that's part of the fun, I think. So we can change the stroke like that. We can change the thickness of the stroke. Uh, and also we can change the color, obviously. Uh, Photoshop does have a stroke function, but it's a lot messier. It's a lot harder to use, I think, effectively. Uh, Illustrator, they, 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 really, they really work together. Um, you could export this as an EPS file and take that into Photoshop, and it's almost, it, it takes two seconds, and you can sort of bounce between the two. So I know that's a very quick version of what we're doing, and uh, it's hard to get precise without finagling and things like that, but that's my basic intro introduction to Year 8 students with Illustrator. So like I said, though, uh, for students to understand this, to embed it into uh, into into YouTube. So as I'm, as I'm recording this tutorial, I've got QuickTime open. It's recorded my whole thing. The, Mac, the microphone on the Mac is quite good. So at this point, I can just quit the whole program. That'll... That'll give me the option to save the video. 